All right, fans are, are calling in yeah. on Skype as well. Uh, Dogs on the Run, again, is the uh, Skype number to get a hold of us. And we're going to go to Kate. Cleveland Kate now joins us. Hi, Kate. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you this morning? Good. good what morning. are your thoughts on yesterday's game? Um, I'm trying to find some positives to cling to. And aside from Spencer Landing, who I thought did a nice job punting, and the defense was pretty decent through three quarters, what else did you guys see that, as a Browns fan, I can hold on to to take a positive away from yesterday? Well, Jordan Cameron, for one, Kate, for sure. I mean, I, it, one of the things that we talked about throughout the preseason is in North Turner's system, your tight end plays a big part. Ask Antonio Gates, who's been in the Pro Bowl and made a ton of money off of him. He's a guy that you want an athletic guy who can, you can throw vertically and stretch the field. It's exactly what Jordan Cameron has been as advertised, and I think he carried over the play that he had in the preseason into this first game. By far, he was, in my opinion, he was the number one thing that was the best about that game. Well, I think the other thing is Joe Hayden from yesterday because Mike Wallace, we didn't hear his name all day. $60 million I, you know, one catch. And he, he didn't do anything. And, of course, we know how good Joe Hayden is. But he's going to have to do that now week in and week out. He's always going to see the best wide receiver. And they're going to try to mismatch on the other side because if you're, on, if you're scheming oh. against the Browns, you're trying to get your best wide receiver up against Buster Screen every oh. time if you or can Chris do it. Owens. So, or Chris Owens yesterday, too. So, uh, without a doubt, uh, Joe Hayden, just because we didn't talk about him much, is probably the number one thing uh, that the Browns were able to do yesterday. And he looked great. He did look great. Kate, we appreciate it. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you, Kate. Appreciate it. Good All right, we're going to go to the phone lines now. Michael is standing by. He is with the Browns backers of Streetsboro. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good morning, my friend. How are you? Good. What's shaking, my man? Michael Rutledge uh, is the president of the streets for Browns backers. Rocket right? country, baby. Yes. Rocket country. Yeah. Chapter 610, buddy. It's still <laughs> go Browns. It's still go Browns. So basically, what I took out, so basically what I took out of this, my friend, is there was too much pressure. It was an issue all day. We basically beat ourselves. Too much pressure, meaning our offensive line didn't play well. That's where you're going with this. I'm not going to go ahead and throw everybody out there, but, yeah, you kind of get the gist of what I'm saying. Well, six sacks. I mean, that's what Michael's talking about. I mean, yeah. it was a constant pressure. And uh, I thought you thought when they put Brandon Whedon in the shotgun, they said they're going to put Whedon in the shotgun 80% of the time. You would think that was the main adjustment. He learned how to throw the ball quickly and release the ball quickly. And they went with some three and four wide receiver sets as much as they could. But I, I think a lot of the pressure was because of the, the, the offensive line. At least that one, the right side did not play very well, Michael, and I, I agree with you. If, if you've got pressure, I think there's some things you've got to make adjustments, and the Browns' offense did not make adjustments. I, I, that was a, you know, and, and a, a lot of, I'm sorry, you can, you can blame North Turner all you want, but a lot of that falls on Chud, too. He makes the final decision. He makes the final call, and as good and as all the props we gave Chud in the preseason, I think it kind of fell in a thud yesterday. All right, hey, Michael, anything else? Uh, with all that being said, we do got something to build upon with Cameron. He looks stellar. But yes, we need he did. More than, you know, but we need more than significant stats on his sheet. Everyone else needs to step up. I think the front seven was solid. And Joe Hayden locked down Wallace. So it's still go Browns, buddy. All right. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. Checking in from the Streetsboro Browns Backers Club, too. So uh, good stuff from him. And, again, we invite you to call us at 216-431-3820. Thank yep. you for watching us on Newsnet5.com, uh, as well as your mobile app. And again, if you're still getting dressed and you're getting ready to go into work, take your phone in the car with you and just listen along. You can Bluetooth in, you can pipe right into the USB port right on your car. So, all right, let's go back to the phone lines, or to the Skype line. It's so used to saying Skype line. <laughs> Chris Fedor is here. Yeah, and, baby. Uh, you know, we he want gets to talk to you. Yeah. He gets, he gets some of that. I love Fedor. Uh, we're going to do some dog, too. Hang on a second. Yeah. Very good. You know you're in trouble if you hear this. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. We've set you up, and if you do anything wrong, just so you know. Okay, now oh, you're you now you're aware of the rules. Thing. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Chris, you are probably one of the top fantasy experts here across the world, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. You are my number oh. one fantasy guy uh, as far as fantasy football goes. Tell me a little bit about who were the winners and losers in fantasy yesterday. Well, I think anybody that had Colin Kaepernick yesterday is in really good shape. Obviously, the quarterback from the 49ers, a lot of people were using a first-round pick on Aaron Rodgers in their league, maybe a second-round pick on Drew Brees of the Saints, maybe a third-round pick on a guy like Peyton Manning, who had seven touchdowns, so it's fantastic. But Colin Kaepernick was a guy that you could have gotten in the middle rounds, round five, round six, and he had over 400 yards passing, 
three touchdowns, just missed on another touchdown, which would have probably been about a 50-yard touchdown. So he was maybe 50 yards away and a touchdown away from getting close to the level of Peyton Manning, what he got to on Thursday night football. And again, you didn't have to spend that high pick on a guy like Colin Kaepernick. So he was a huge winner at the quarterback spot yesterday. That's one of your huge winners. Uh, if, who are fantasy fails or who was the biggest fantasy fail for you yesterday? Or actually this weekend, if you want to count Thursday night as well. Well, I'll, I'll go with last night's game. David Wilson of the New York Giants. And Mike, Ooh. I know you were tweeting about him yesterday. Oh, boy. Man, just a frustrating guy. He went into last year, a lot of hype surrounding his rookie year. He's playing on national football against the Cowboys, and he fumbles. And then he gets put in the doghouse last year for almost the entire season. Well, at the end of last season, then he runs off four straight games where you're starting to think, okay, maybe he's got it. Yep. Maybe he's going to figure it out. And then he comes into this offseason. He's the lead running back in New York. Andre Brown, his backup, a guy who would have taken carries away, some goal line carries away, he gets hurt. Yep. So now the show belongs to David Wilson of the New York Giants. Big things are expected of him, and I expected huge things from him. I was expecting him to be a breakout candidate this year. He has seven carries, 19 yards, and he fumbles twice. And now who knows if he's going to get back on the field or if his carries are going to be limited or if he's going to be back in Tom Coughlin's doghouse. Yep. So he was somebody that a lot of people were excited to see this year. Sky was the limit based on his talent, and they fumbled away his opportunity. Hey, Chris, who were the big losers yesterday? If, who, who were the biggest disappointments in fantasy from yesterday? Well, besides David Wilson, like I just mentioned, right. um, I would say Stephen Ridley is another one because, again, he came into New England. He was probably a first-round pick in fantasy football, maybe a high second-round pick. He was supposed to be the lead running back in an explosive offense. And just like David Wilson, he fumbled away his opportunity as well. He was running well. He had nearly 50 yards in the first 14 minutes of the game. And starting to think, okay, maybe he's going to get close to 100 yards in a touchdown. And then he fumbled, and he got taken out of the game, and he didn't play the rest of the way. Shane Vereen comes in, a guy who's got some promise in New England. He takes over. He has over 100 yards rushing, over 50 yards receiving. So now it looks like there could be a committee approach to that running back spot in New England. Everybody that used a first-round pick on, on, on Stephen Ridley or a high second-round pick is probably scrambling right now. All right, so with that said, and I know we got two games still tonight, um, and we, well, we only get one chance to talk to him once a week, being right. on a Monday, right? So we kind of got to look ahead a little bit to Sunday. Give me two things. Uh, give me waiver wire winner, somebody that can be picked up right now that you can play next week. A running back in particular. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, or, and also a must play for this coming weekend. Well, I just don't think there's that running back on the waiver wire, unfortunately. Just oh, because. you're killing me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Andy. I know you're looking. I I've seen your team. I'm not <laughs> scrambling for that waiver wire. Just that running back. But I think that's the name of his team, Chris. Waiver wire, it's going to be called. It normally, it's apathy by week two. <laughs> yeah, it's just the problem is everybody drafted running back so early, and they took some backups just in case they could cash in that lottery ticket. So, Running back is going to be slim pickings. I mean, maybe somebody wants to go out to the waiver wire and get Darrell Scott from the New York Giants who came in and relieved um, David Wilson last night, and he actually played okay. He yeah. did some positive things. But in case David Wilson fumbles again at the beginning of their next game, maybe somebody wants to go out and get Darrell Scott. But I would say another target would be just going back to Thursday night's game between Denver and Baltimore, um, you know, Marlon Brown was somebody who came into the game for an injured Jacoby Jones. Jacoby Jones from the Ravens looks like he's going to miss four to six weeks with a knee injury. Um, Joe Flacco is going to need somebody to catch the football besides Torrey Smith. So that could be somebody that you want to pick up from the Ravens. Also, Julian Edelman got in the end zone two times. Everybody knows Danny Amendola is somebody who can't stay on the field. He always gets banged up. So Julian Edelman could be a really good backup plan to Danny Amendola if Amendola ever goes down. And you know what? Julian Edelman was involved in the game plan even when Danny Amendola was in the game. So I would say those two guys would be pretty high priority this week in terms of free agents. Hey, Chris, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll be looking forward to your fantasy questions and, and fantasy answers throughout the season. So I appreciate your help, and we'll talk to you soon. That we lost in there at the end. You can also read Thanks, my Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Yeah, I need he, his help uh, desperately for my fantasy Well, team. weren't you winning? I thought you said at one point you were looking I at I was winning, but I don't have any running backs.
Uh, um, you have Le'Veon Bell, right? And he's yeah. going to come back. Hopefully he's back this week, but I don't know that he is. Any Steelers fans over there think he's going to be coming back next week? No, they're no, shaking their heads. Not, <laughs> uh, not very excited about that <laughs> and the opportunity of that. Let's go back to the phone lines. Again, we ask you to participate. It's really a big vent session if you want to talk about what happened to the Browns yesterday yeah. and their loss over the Miami Dolphins. 216-431-3820, just like Jane did. Hi, Jane. How are you? Hi. Good, thanks. All right, what do you got for us, Jane? Well, um, I can throw better than Wheaton, and I'm a girl. <laughs> wow. So, wow. you know, and I throw like a girl. Wow. <laughs> the dogs are barking. Yeah, that one, Jay. What was your biggest problem? What was your biggest problem with Brandon Wheaton yesterday? Was it the interceptions yeah, or just the decision-making? Uh, both, but I would definitely say the interceptions, they were, they were lousy. I mean, I'm not a great... I can't see things the way Bernie Kosar can see them, but even I could see that you don't throw a ball. I mean, they were, they were just, they were, it was stupid. It was crazy. He, he wasn't thinking. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, two of those interceptions in the first half, and I don't know if a lot of people are going to see it this way, but I, I clearly think that two of those interceptions were not his fault yesterday. Well, deflected balls. The third balls. one was, I mean, you can't control a deflected ball, and you really, really can't control a wide receiver that doesn't finish their route. And that's what happened on the long pass uh, that turned out to be better than a punt on the well, long pass. Well, I'll one, give so. them that one. But the whole offense is having problems. And you're not going to like hearing this, but why, don't the, why doesn't the Browns organization hire Bernie Kosar, best football mind out there, uh, to help that team? Because year after year after year, our, our defense is great. You know, Horton's doing a phenomenal job. But then you've you got the offense. It's the same year after year after year. We're tired of it. All right, Jane, thank you. We're going to answer that question for you right now. Look, the thing about Bernie Kosar is Bernie is pretty happy where he is in his life right yep. now. And he's had to turn some things around. And, yes, he is the best football mind uh, that I've ever watched a game with. There is no question about it. Bernie Kosar can see a play as soon as the team breaks the huddle. But the thing about it is, and Bernie will tell you this, that early on when the learners bought the team, they wanted him to be a very integral part of the uh, be an integral part of it. But at the time, he still owned part of the Panthers. He had a ton of stuff going on in his life. He just didn't think it was right for him. So as time progressed, you get new regimes in, and they want to do what they want to do, and, and you go here and there. Bernie is a part of the organization right now. Always will They be. have welcomed him back, and he feels like he's a part of the team now, but he's not just not, excuse me, he's just not in a position right now to be a coach. And it's hard. If you're Chud, you want to make sure you have your guys there. Bernie would be a great consultant for this team. And that's what he is, and that's where he, I think he should be. And, and I agree with you. And believe me, it, it, we all want to jump off the 480 bridge. So everybody just take a step back from the 480 bridge. Take your phone. Give us a call. Skype from your phone. Go and download your Newsnet 5 mobile app. Whatever you need to do, step away from the bridge. It's <laughs> one game, Andy. It happens every year. I mean, how yeah, long have course. we been doing this job? And how many times have we gone through a Nine. Right. There you go. Nine, Nine straight years. This Monday has happened. Nine straight years. The Browns have lost all but one home game since, or one opening day game since they have come back to town. And so this is what we've been used to. Relax, take a, take a breath. It's not that it's going to get any easier with going on the road to play the Ravens, but at the same time, I know everybody wants to try and fix it right now. And as Josh said, they're going to go in, they're going to look at their film today, they're going to, they're going to focus each side of the ball or each unit's going to focus on one thing that they did bad and try and correct it. And that's where it starts.